Hello, it's Sarah, and I'm just going to make a couple of ATCs, but um, this all started because I wanted to paint on fabric again, and I hadn't really been doing that kind of work, so I needed to play around a little bit to, um, hi Ginny, uh, to see where I was going, and you know, in the past I've done videos about color mixing and how, not color mixing, but how not to make mud. Um, it's really best if you stick to one color section of the color wheel. So anything that's next to each other on the color wheel, you're fine. You won't make mud. When you start mixing colors like wet paint that are opposite contrasting colors or complementary colors, that's when you're going to run into trouble. Um, and so I couldn't find my color wheel yesterday when I made these. Um, and I just made myself a little color wheel. So basically, I just Googled it. And you got your three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. And then you just mix variations of those. And, I mean, this is supposed to be purple. It kind of looks kind of muddy. Um, but anywho, uh, that being said... I wanted to do some backgrounds. Now, when I did my, and I'll show you my journal, this is what I wanted to do. Um, these are just Tim Holtz numbers that I had, I think probably from a, a clearance rack somewhere, but I just really liked it on there. It said, it said what it needed to say. Um, I just kind of used a brush and hit hit and miss paint all over the place on this fabric. I'm going to go back and watch it again. Um, but I just decided to get these little canvases out yesterday and play around. And I basically just had red, yellow, blue. Um, and decide, And then, of course, there's some metallics in here and, and some glitter paint and stuff. Like, I did add in other colors. But first, I just started to play around with that. And um, it gets out of control for me because I love color and I can easily make mud. I also did one on a black background. I had gessoed this with black to see if I would get a different, um, but I am so heavy handed, that's what I got. Now I don't know what I'm gonna do with these, um, but I had to chillax. I had to tone myself down. So. I ended up going with my good old Briar Technique. My love, Kate Crane, is a very awesome artist. She does a lot of videos for jelly press, or gel press, I'm sorry, um, which you use these little jelly plates to create a monoprint, and you use your Briar. So you can use a, a Briar without a gel print, a jelly plate, and um, really get cool... Um, coverage as well. And the reason I like it is because I am such a heavy hand, um, it keeps me light. It keeps it light. So this was my um, my red versions, and then I'll do a blue version. So this is kind of this side of the color wheel. And today I'm going to do this side of the color wheel with blues, greens, and then I'll add in some purples. Um, I could probably add yellow um, as well, but I also had a lot of different, um, what are they called? Neons, neon paints. So these are just super bright, but I love how they turned out. Uh, I used some stamps from a stamp set by Dina Wakely Media, and today I'm going to use these B's, the, two, the big B and the little B. I've already stamped them out um, and cut them out. And um, positive uh, words, I'll probably use some from this sheet. Um, I liked some of these. These are by um, Cosmo Cricut, and it says, Just Because, tiny text. Um, and a lot of them have to do with art, which is great, but there's also just um, positive uh loving sentiments. So I'm probably going to use those because, um, like this says, love and understanding, and it's just like a little, it's the little pansy. I'll go in a little bit. I really didn't do anything special. I just adhered a heart for the love. I added that this morning, actually, 
and then begin your journey is this one and I put a little stickles in the center of the flower and that's it um, so today I'm going to do, so that's the flowers, I'm going to do the bees. But like these are little canvases that I've done in the past. And it's much better if you start off with, and just keep it in the same family. And this looks like I probably used gelatos. I don't remember. And I should write on there. Where's Kirby? Hold on. Ginny's here. Are you harassing my dog? Yeah, she's under my desk, Kirby. Jen, can you, oh, that's not yours. Give me that. Oh, you little beast. She's a beast. Can I please have that? All right, got it. That's Kirby. And Ginny is my brother's, I'm not my brother, my son, James's dog. She's a poodle, so she's way bigger than Kirby. Aren't ya? Big beast. Big beast. All right. So all I did was take some of that um, mixed media paper that we've been using for our art journal pages and covered it with um, the Tim Holtz tissue paper. It's called Melange. Just to put something on there, I used matte medium and then I gave it a coat of gesso, white acrylic gesso with my briar. Did that yesterday. Um, because then I can kind of go, go lightly with my paint. So I'm gonna take some, let me go out again. And I'm gonna put, I have a wax palette here. This is palette paper. Um, let me get, I'm going to use some of the Dina Wakely Media Heavy Body. So just a teensy bit of that. I have silver for my metallic. I have, I don't want to use purple. I'm going to use, um, I want like a blue. Sorry, I thought I had, yeah, I do. Like these metallics. And I don't know if a peacock pearl and that will go together, but I think it will. Um, I don't have like any other glitter paints. I just have, this is the only glitter paint I have. Oh, that's a neon, this one. This is called Glamour Dust and it's like a glitter paint and it's um, neon. So I need to get those because I really like playing with those. Those are super fun. I have a metallic purple and I have my go-to citron green, which I love because I use craft paint. I'm a craft painter. And so I don't have like true pigment paint, you know, like tubes of straight blue or whatever color. So um, let's just see what happens. And I, like I said, I'm going to use my briar. Put a little bit, just a teensy bit. I purposely, purpose, purposefully need to be light. I have to try not to go too crazy. Wow, that's gorgeous already. But what happens when you add it with the briar, see it kind of grabs the gesso in such a way that I think I need a little more. It is gorge. Um, in such a way that it stays light, but yet it's there. You can't deny. So let's go. I'm going to go over. It gives you some texture. That's what I'm trying to say. I love it. OMG. This is making me happy. So this is why I need to do more of this because my son has, um, let's see. Let's just say the disease of addiction. And those of you who watch my, I want to clean the briar each time too. Watch my videos have known because I've talked about this topic. Um, anywho, yesterday he just left. He And he hasn't been back so I think he's on a binge type, type thing. Not doing good, shall we say. Um, we were literally on the phone calling places for detox because he, you have to be detox. Look at how gorgeous that looks just on my palette. Jenny, you have to go around. Smart. You're smart. You don't need to, you know how to go around, Jen. Um, I shouldn't talk about it while I'm doing this because this is making me happy. But anyway, he, uh, we were literally on the phone 
and he said, oh, I have to go out to my car to get my license, and he just left. So um, I was kind of just feeling I wanted to wish him the best and um, just made, that's why I made those begin your journey and love and understanding. That's all we can do is hope for the best. So these all have similar themes. I really just like the theme. They're positive. And um, let's go with this peacock pearl and see what happens. And let me see my... So here's the... Say this is blue-violet, right? That's kind of what that looks. I would say this is the blue-green. So we should be fine. And then I could even add regular greens, which I have leaf green and then my citron. So I think that's where I'm going to go. And this is a metallic or actually a pearl. This one's by Dazzling Metallics, it's called. And I love using metallics. They're so... I really get excited by color. Like shiny things I guess right that looks pretty I mean it didn't make mud that's for sure and then when we add the green we'll see what happens but I'm gonna do it I want to add all these colors that are next to each other I even have a blue let's see I think I'm just gonna go with the greens um, this leaf green I might have to turn off the camera and go break up a, um, yeah, I hear them. You know, I walked them both for a mile at least. First I do Ginny, and then I do Kirby, and they're still at it. See, that scares me. That one seems like it could make mud. Oh, Lord. But it didn't. I mean, it's decent. It's not, I don't love that because it's just not, it kind of has a little bit of a more muddy tone to it. But by the time we're done putting all the color on here, it'll be good. I'm going to go with the Citron next. And that's what this is. This is called Citron Green. I'm going to have to separate them. You hear that? That's Ginny. She is a lot. She's only three. Oh my god. And Kirby's 10 pounds. So it's a Oh dear God. She thinks and she thinks she's a toy. Like she thinks Kirby's a toy. She thinks, um, wow. She thinks, uh, my birdie is a toy. Like if Kiwi, I usually let Kiwi out um, on my shoulder a lot or just like on the on the back of a chair. And Ginny will try to get her. Like she tries to, Kirby, are you okay? Good girl, Kirby. Kirby just jumped up on the couch. She's smart. See how pretty this looks? I mean, I don't like this as much as the um, reds. Like, for some reason, I don't know. This is just brighter. You know what? I'm going to add a little yellow, I think. Kirby can hold her on from the couch because then she's as tall as Ginny. And Ginny's so gentle. Oh, boy. She jumped down. You'll hear her. She, she'll get angry. Kirby will just, like, get pissed off in a minute. All right, so what color didn't I use yet? Um, and then I'm going to add these bees, and that'll be contrasting. So I'll paint the bees with yellow. So maybe I'll light, I won't do yellow. I'll use um, orange, maybe yellow, and red, you know, to do the bees. 
Oh my God, I'm gonna have to break it up. I'm just too distracted. I'll be right back. Okay. Luckily, my husband is very uh, good at, anyway, we made our little timeout area in the house. So Jenny can just chill in there and um, we can have peace. <laughs> so this is called Ocean Reef Blue and it's Gorge. And I just wanna go over a couple of those spots that, I mean, it's not really showing up. I don't mind it though. It's definitely, I think this color green dulled it down. So I feel bad because I'd really like to start over. Um, but I'm going to keep going. But this color isn't even really showing up. And then what else do I want to do? Um, we're going to do some just like mark making. Oops. Get a butt wipe. Some mark making. So just some circles and a little bit of stamping. And if you'll notice on this one, you can really see the Tim Holtz paper behind it. I can see the music notes. I can see. But this one, I've covered it. So maybe these colors are just denser. These, I used a lot more neons and uh, metallic. So those aren't as highly, you know, they're not opaque paint. They're definitely... Um, like see through their sheer so maybe that's what happened so I'm gonna go with um, I could always go with white bring some uh, brightness back with white for sure and the lighter colors and you can do that with paint just paint and mark making tools or inks and I have this ink pad I used this one by Dina Wakely yesterday it has this blue and this blue so those both those blues could go with this really well and then black and white are always your contrast colors that you can use um, and I'll use maybe I'll use some silver I was thinking of using silver I might use silver as my detail like see how I, I really just kept it simple I was very I'm still <laughs> very distracted but I just wanted to play so, and it's got some sparkle and I really like it. All right, so let's put out, I think I'm just gonna put out some paint first. Um, this is called Admiral Blue. And I wanna make some circles with bottle caps. Oops. And I have a few different, and because I'm working on a small scale here, I might keep them smaller. I did a couple different sizes. I have these two. This is good. I don't know what kind of cap this is from either, but you just kind of get the cap in the edge of the cap in the paint and make some circles. I was addicted to these. I really loved making circles for a while. Don't talk about addiction, Sarah. That's not the appropriate word. But I have my own addictions we all do I think crafts can be in there but it doesn't mess up your life like you don't lose your job hopefully or steal which Matthew does so um, I just I get it though I think it's definitely a disease his brain changes you know what you could do Ooh, I just thought of something. I could make um, paint inside the circle like um, I want to do citron. I make it white. I think I might do that. I'm going to change this one up a little bit. You know, it would be cool if I had a, I might have a honeycomb. Eh, a honeycomb. Um, I think I do, like a hexagonal um stencil that I could like stencil on here and make it um because I'm gonna put bees make it look like a honey a bee whatever they have hive so see how we're not making mud and we're also not really um 
distracting our eye too much like it's not too much because it's in the same color family that's what I've learned so in the beginning when I would do mixed media and that's why I wanted to play around with this a little bit before I go ahead and paint my fabric again because um, I don't want to take a big piece of fabric and just like make mud you know mess it up so I needed to kind of revisit and control myself a little more but that looks super cool all right so now I've got to do some black and some white um, remember I said I was gonna do silver too I think I'm gonna do a little silver on top and I'm gonna use a um, one of my favorite stamps which is this it's a Di Dina Diane Reevely stamp it's the circle stamp so I'm just going to take this I don't love that one um, so that's what silver I think we still need some white and I'm going with a lot of circles here but I think um, I could throw in something different with the white how about like I have a flower I wonder if this would show up if I did oh these are cute wait 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 I know I'm not in the shot guys sorry I'm looking through my little bin my bin of stuff this one see this could be cool maybe i'll do that in black and put some of these in white nah they're too big maybe some uh, some numbers ah oh, diamonds i'm gonna do these in just like not metallic or anything like straight white this is actually light ivory this is white And I just kind of rub it around and then dip this in. Um, I have a smaller one. Yeah, this one. This is a Tim Holtz one. And this is a Dina Diane Reevely one. This is a Tim Holtz one. That was, I'm going to use this one. So I just kind of get like a stripe. And I can control where I put it. And this is just all personal preference, guys. You, you know, don't... That's the one thing I want you to know is to use what you have. You don't have to use anything I have. And just enjoy the process. That's really what mixed media has become for me. It's just playing with tools that I love. So, um, yeah, I think I do want a couple circles, too maybe bigger circles. I have one other cap that's a bit bigger, this one. Um, and uh, only do it if, if it feels good. I actually struggled through and muddled through and I'm pretty glad I did. So maybe in that case, keep playing until it feels good because um, it is worth it. <laughs> I mean to get through those struggles the frustration before you really understand what you're doing like why do you use gesso why do you you know use these different tools like what are we doing why are we covering up everything we already did um, because it just adds depth and layers and um, yeah it's not about I don't know I mean because obviously we want the focal image to show up but I think that shows up and I could always shade so I may do that too I'm gonna do this in black I'm gonna do this in black in a couple places I think I really want to let this dry well I'll go off camera and dry it and I'll be back all right I'm gonna do something that I always like to do on my projects which is to float and I'm gonna use this Admiral blue I just really like it 
um, around the edges and it just kind of frames the piece um, listen I didn't invent this stuff it's just I'm kind of getting used to my way of doing it and so this is just what I do but those of you who have the like what are they called fabric pastel pit pens or even your ink just your Tim Holtz distress inks you can put around the edges to you know why just to frame it to give it something that like makes it grounds it right is that what what it does and I just oops I just float because this technique is something that I brought with me from decorative painting and I get the same result and I like to float so I know I repeat myself guys but someone out there is new and they might not understand so I just say it for them did that even do anything Payne's gray would have been a, a good another good choice for this because it's a bluish it's a very dark blue color and I think it really would have grounded it nice okay all right now I'm gonna stamp with I think see because I have ink but I don't think it'll take I'm gonna stamp with paint with just black paint so I'm gonna do the same thing on my palette paper here put out a little black paint and whoops put it back where I got it um, make a little ink pad and take this butt little flower this I think is another um, Diane Reevely stamp but I've carved my own as well so let's just yay I'm just glad it came out and I oops I think I have a smaller one of these too which probably would have looked nicer but I mean I like it I'm gonna put um, bees on here so uh oh I think Maya got good test grades that's what's coming through there um, yeah, we like to be a cheerleader for my granddaughter when she's doing good because she had some struggles. She's so smart, though. She speaks two languages. She's a, such a smart kid. Um, all right, so I like this. Now, I could have the option to paint those flowers with a contrasting color. So let me move this out of the way and so I don't put my hand in it but some of these colors because I like how this looks um, I think I'm gonna use those flowers and I'm going to and then we'll have to adhere a B and I have a big B and a little B so I think I might just put one B maybe the little B on the other one and some words of encouragement and we're gonna paint them um, all right so let me go off camera and figure it out and I'll be right back oopsie okay I think I've figured it out but real quick I just shaded behind the flower let's go in and <clears throat> I hadn't done that on these and I thought well it would really help so I got out a deep like burgundy color it's called Napa red and I'm just gonna stick it in the shadow areas so I don't know all around it basically and I just tickle it in there up against the flower mostly like up against and now all of a sudden without outlining it with black pen which you could absolutely do and I do all the time I love that look um, you get a more it just kinda comes up oh, and I'm not in the shot but it it just helps so I'll, I'll go around the um, 
words, maybe just under the words at least, and hopefully be in the shot. So, and I actually get it on the, maybe to the right. And then I'll just take a Q-tip. Because I put gel medium on it, I can take it off the words, but it looked kind of pretty on the words. But see, so now you have, it just pops off the page better. I really like that. So here's what I chose to do for these. I put my bees on. This one says, be brave and do it. And there's a little bee on there. I'm going to fix it up to make it show up. And this one says, I believe in you. And there's a big bee. So I'm going to color my bees with yellow and orange. And I'm going to do the flowers with like fuchsia. And I want you to see how that the contrast makes all the difference. I mean, uh, it's pretty obvious when you see the purple and the green on top of this too, right? So I'm going to use just a little, a little round brush and just go in and really, actually I should float it too. I'm going to try and just keep it light so I'm just going to water it down and just but even on and on top of the blue it's almost turning a little purpley because I'm doing it sheer it kinda see and I just put the um the gel medium on here oh it came off but see how like bright it really shows up. Makes me happy. But I mean, I could have come back if I wanted that to stay in the background. I could have come back with a light blue color and you would still be able to see it like it would still be part of the project but it wouldn't be the standout thing so maybe that would have been a smarter move so let me do that I'm gonna do that on the other one let's do let's color the flowers with I don't know how about a pretty one of the pretty colors um, how about purple I mean if I use the same purple because it's in the same fam, I think I want to try that. It's in the same family of the blues. See, if because I use purple here, it pops because it's contrasting. But if I use it here, it should kinda. It'll be there, but it won't be. And this is called purple. And it's just your regular acrylic paint. And that way I can make my B the star of the show with the complementary colors. And obviously, I mean, this is a kind of a really bad brush. This is, I used this brush for my matte medium. And so it's not really, it doesn't have much of a point on it. I don't have a lot of control with it. And I actually made that super dark. For some reason, I have trouble keeping things sheer. I probably just didn't add enough water. But I don't want it to be opaque. I like the the background to show through. So that's why I blotted that off. But see, I'm going to get a better brush, that's all. That brush didn't have any um, point to it. And I'll get it much wetter. Well. And we'll try that, try that again. I'll just have to blot. This is just a really dark color. It's a very bright, deep purple. It's gorge. So, oops. Color makes me happy. Color is my happy place. Um... But yeah, so see the difference? That's pretty cool. 
and you can even blot it down a little more and you can definitely see them let's put I could I think I'm gonna put stickles in the middle but I probably have like a green stickles stickles is like glitter glue and I say stickles and I expect you guys to know and I get a lot of questions what is stickles but it's just the Ranger brand of glitter glue it's not and I just like it. it has a lot of different colors and I'm just pouncing it in kind of poking it in there trying to keep it sheer which now I really poked it off there um, so that's basically it guys isn't that something though don't you love it contrast and, and I mean you can go to town with um, your white gel pen your black pen and make all the details and um, I guess I should pick one thing I'll show you too because I stamped well I stamped the flowers right onto the piece but the the bees I stamped onto white um, just regular printer paper and then I cut them out and I didn't fussy cut them out exact so there's a little bit of like paper. I'll zoom in and I'll show you. So just like right on this little guy, I could just stick a little blue. Like I think I'll use some of what color? Some of this ocean reef blue. Just sheer, but like right on that white spot. And Oh no, where else? Here. It just kind of defined his little arms a little better. And I don't even know if I'm zoomed in far enough for you to see that. But it makes me feel better. And then let's paint his little body yellow. Um, I have neon yellow. But I have regular yellow too just can't find it opaque yellow and I'm gonna try again to just keep it sheer um, so I've got water in my brush because if you go right into the paint I think I had purple in my brush still it'll just be opaque and just gently Let's see how that yellow pops. I don't know if their legs are yellow or black. Probably black. Put his head. And I'm going to put some, I'll put stickles on his wings for sure. Um, stickles, again, is just a glitter glue, and I'll put clear. See, I get, I get, start to get careless. Probably not even in the shot. Oh, I am. And what else can I do? Well, we can outline things now. Um, and you could use silver, because I have, um, like, silver metallic pens. This is my go-to black. This is my go-to gold. Where's my silver? I can never find it. See, I tried to, this video, I really tried to pull things ahead of time so I don't spend a lot of time searching. But that's not happening. This is the Pen Touch Gold, which that would look pretty, but I think silver would look better. Let's just outline. I believe in you. I'm going to go around the edge with a little frame line and again this is where your personality your style comes into play um, I am not a great doodler I don't can't think of things I'm a copycat and I do better when I see it in front of me and so um, doodling is a lot more free and 
I guess I'm not that free. I'm a little more um, structure like. I like structure, I guess. And so that's the that's the best I can do <laughs> as far as doodling goes. But oh, I didn't outline these words. I'm definitely gonna um, put some stickles. And I like it. It made me happy. I feel like I'm supporting my son in his journey. Um, let's just put these stripes back on here. Um, he's got a long road because he's fighting it right now. He's not trying to get clean at the moment. And, whoop, his little eyeballs. I'll just... Probably has a little... Tail, not a tail, a stinger, right? Boop. All right. So, did I put a frame on that one? But you can't really see it. Oops. And you know what? I want to do a little. And when I put the stickles on there, it probably goes right away. Oh, and then the shading. So, all right. What was I going to shade? You know what? I am. I'm going to use Payne's gray. Because it's just going to make those little bees. I won't go around the flowers. I'll just stick to the, the bees. And then I'll add stickles and I will be done. Perfect timing because it's almost time for Din Din. So this is Payne's Gray. And this is that super dark bluish purpley. I just love it color. And I'm going to stick it behind his little rump. It might be too dark actually. Need a little more water on my brush. Up this side of his little leg. I think it's a little too dark. But that's just me. I'm a heavy hand. Everything I do is dark. Just just so you know, I'm I'm really yeah. Just my signature look, darkness. I think I'm making the pen run a little bit. A um, little bit around the other wing. <clears throat> but so to me this is so calming like this really is my serenity guys and that's why don't give up you can do it I mean I think art oops, art is a, a lot of things it can be a lot of things to different people but for me I don't really have to well I'm learning that I don't have to create something necessarily just be in the moment. That's the most important thing that I've learned through my mixed media, through my whole YouTube journey, is being in the moment and enjoying the process. So just this little, isn't that, that's going to bling. All right, and then I have this green. I have this green. Hey, Joe. Uh-oh, my husband just got home. I'm going to put a little bit on here. Anywho. She, she is like such a love though. But she's a lot. I love putting stickles on things. There that. Yeah. Just because it gives me a break. So this is Stickles. Hi, babe. I'm just finishing a video. Yeah, she'll. She's just gonna run. Give her. Give me a sec. And look, I didn't go around this one. I don't know if I love that. I'll have to fix that. My bee got smudged somehow. 
but I like it. I'll fix it. Alright you guys, so that's it. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.